Okay, this is a continuation of the basic MIDI screencast. I'm going to show some alternative ways to generate some really interesting piano patterns and musical outcomes using a few basic concepts. Metro, MIDI pitch and velocity, basic math, addition really, that's it, the random object, and then the idea of hot and cold inlets. There are several ways that we could connect all of these things up. There are three main musical outcomes that I'm going to discuss in this screencast. Pitch, so how high or low the note is, velocity, which is the strength of the note, and tempo, which is the intervals between the strikes of the note. You can affect all three of these musical qualities digitally here by changing values in specific ways. So right now, let's start with pitch. Right now we have a counter set up to count in a palindrome up and down the keyboard from 36 to 83. So note that 36 is the lowest note on the keyboard. Turn that up for you. And 83 is the highest key on the keyboard. And this is just the octaves that we're currently displaying here. So we'll use these numbers because they help us. We can actually see them on the case slider. But that's why we have the counter set up here. So just go ahead and turn this on so you can see what's going on. Okay, so we have a metro. It's at 100 milliseconds. So that means the interval between each bang is 100 milliseconds or every tenth of a second. So right now I'm sending one integer into the case slider, but I could send more than one integer into the case slider, and then that would allow me to play two notes at once. So let's say that I want to play a note that is four half steps above the current count. I can use a basic math operation on this. I'm going to take the integer that I currently have and I'm going to add 4 to it. I just added a plus object, so I clicked N for new object and then the plus key on my keyboard and then a space and then this addition object takes an initial value and that is the right operand of your math equation. So whatever it is that you're adding to your initial value. Here I'm going to say 4 because I would like 4 half steps above. I'll hit enter. Then the output of the counter is giving me integers. I'm going to put that into my left inlet. And then the outlet of my 4, my plus 4 here, is going to give me the result of the equation. And just so you can see what it is, we'll put an integer in here. We don't need it, but just so that we can see it. And then we're going to take that output and put it directly into the case slider. Let's listen to that. So now you can hear that we have two notes playing at once. Now, effectively, they are playing at once because we hear them at the same time. Actually, what's happening is that I'm sending the original note two places at once. I do some very, very quick operations here, and then that note goes into the case lighter. They actually aren't happening at the same time, but our ear interprets them that way. Okay, so... We have now one note. If I wanted, I could actually string some of these addition objects together. So I just duplicated that code and I could add more than one note. So now I've got a minor chord. Sorry, it's a major chord happening here. And I could keep adding these on if I really wanted to. Okay. By the way, if you're a musician, you might be interested to know that the integer boxes actually have a display mode that shows the letter name of the MIDI note. You find this in the object inspector. Oops, slide that out. You can change the display format here. Usually it's just an integer, but you have all of these other options. If you choose MIDI C4, you can see the actual note. Again, this is only going to matter if you're a musician and you're familiar with this notation. Let's close that. So another thing that might be interesting with pitch is to actually set up multiple metros at different rates so that I can create some interesting rhythmic patterns. So let me show you how that would work. I'll change this to say, well, let's make this all slower. We'll do 50, 
maybe 300 and also want less notes in here just for clarity's sake do something like this I don't know, this might sound terrible. So you can hear there are two distinct patterns happening here. And in fact, if you wanted, you could use a different toggle. So you could turn them on and off independently. Or you can all connect them up to the same one. Okay, so, so far with pitch, we've only looked at counter. So we just have ascending or descending pitches, but maybe instead we want to have some more random pitches. So for this, you could use a random object. So N for new object, random is the object, and random's job is to spit out random integers within a predefined range. So if I want a random note on the keyboard, I have to know how many notes there are and what the range is. So we already figured out before that on this case slider we have from 36 to 83. So I wish that random worked like counter so that you could just put in the same range, right? Between 36 and 83. I wish this was the case, but it's actually not how that works. What random is looking for is actually a range. And when it's, it says range, which again, this is misleading, it's actually looking for one integer and it's the integer that you give it is going to be the top of the range and zero is always going to be the bottom of the range. So actually what I need to know is the total number of notes here that I'm looking for. And between 36 and 83, that's 48 possible keys. So here my range is 48. Okay, so here's my random object. It's going to spit out a random number between zero and 47. Now, it's not going to go all the way to 48 because we don't start counting at one, we start counting at zero. So if we have a range of 48 and we start counting at zero, the highest value we'll get is actually 47. So actually we want our range to be from 36 to 83. So we need another addition object here we are going to add 36 on here to make that the lowest part of my range. And then we can fit that into our keyboard. Okay, so you could just hook up your Metro here if you wanted. Delete that for a moment. And just automate that random pitch. Okay, the next musical quality we'll look at is tempo. We know that we can change the tempo by using metro. Higher numbers mean longer intervals between bangs, so slower tempos. Lower numbers in milliseconds here in metro mean shorter intervals between bangs, so faster tempos. I have this default argument here, but I could replace this default argument with an integer into my cold inlet here. So right now it says 250, but any number I put in here changes the speed of the metro. So since we just saw random here, maybe what we want to do is use a random value for our metro. The tricky part here is figuring out what random value you want. So you get to choose. And here's where the artistic part comes in. How fast or slow do you want to allow your random tempo to be? So I like something somewhere between 100, I'm just gonna get rid of this for a second, 100 and maybe 500 for this example, and I'll show you what that sounds like in a minute. You can choose your own, play with it, and decide what you like. So I'm gonna set my random argument, I'll set my range, and again, I, I'm, I wanna do from 100 to 500. So you might think, okay, 500 is the top, Minus 100 is actually 400, so 400, that's my range. But actually, that's not right, because if I want to include both the number 100 and the number 500 in my possible range here, that's actually 401 possible integers, not 400. 
So 401 is my range, and now the random object is going to spit out a random number between 0 and 400. So then again, I need to add to get my bottom number to be 100, which is my desired range. And then the output of that is my randomized tempo. So I'm going to take this output and put it into the cold inlet of my metro. And we'll just listen to how this sounds with the counter. I don't need this anymore. Okay. Okay, so just coming back to this for a second, you know, in this example, being so precise doesn't matter, right? If we're off by one millisecond, no one is going to know the difference. This isn't space trajectories or stock market calculations. But later on, this could get really important. So it's good to be able to think clearly about it now. It's also something that will keep cropping up. So and I want to make sure that we take the time to talk about it now, even in this example where the difference between 400 and 401 in our random range here is not going to matter at all. Back to this. So in the last example, I was clicking here to change the tempo. But if I wanted, I could actually ask for a new random value every time the Metro sends out a new bang. So I'm going to do that by taking the output of my Metro and putting it into this button object. And now every single bang that this Metro spits out, I get a new random value which resets the speed and sends a new bang which resets the random value which sends a new speed. So between every single interval in the Metro, I have a random value somewhere between 100 and 500 milliseconds. So let's hear what this sounds like. Okay, so the last musical characteristic I will show in this screencast is velocity, which we translate mostly as loudness or volume. That's not technically true, given that psychoacoustics tells us that our brains take in sound in different ways based on its properties, our ears, etc. But that's a story for another day. So we can control velocity with just a number, and we've done this so far with the make note object. So just as a reminder, this is an object that makes an on off note MIDI message and sends that out to our MIDI module on our computer. And the make note object takes in these default arguments. The first one is velocity, which I currently have set to 127, the highest velocity value. And then the second argument here is duration in milliseconds. So how long you want our note, our mini note, to last. So in addition to putting a default argument here in make note, which I have right as 127, I can also send a velocity value to make note in real time, right into this second inlet. So I could do this with another random object, and then every time I get a new tempo, I could also get a new velocity and that would look something like this where we would take 128 as our range and just send that straight into our velocity okay and that would be interesting too you might also consider using counter as a way to change the velocity in more of a crescendoing and decrescendoing way. So I'm going to take another counter object and just put it down here for the moment. Let's change our arguments. So maybe I would like to go from a mid volume to a high volume and then back down. So this is a palindroming counter up and down. So that's mode two. I'm going to leave that there. And then mid volume is 60 and then high volume is 127. So this is my counter. It's just going to count from 60 to 127 and back. And I will take the output of the metro here that's controlling everything, put that into my counter, get rid of this random thing here, 
and let's listen to that. Okay, I didn't like that very much because it took so long for this velocity value to change. So what if I grab another metro object and make it super fast, unhook it from that, and then use a toggle to turn on this metro object. So then this metro object is going to be sending a bang into this counter object, and then this counter will take our velocity value up and down at a much faster pace. Or this is a bit of a mess, maybe we can organize it here, command Y to line these up. Okay, let's see how this works. Okay, so that's still a little bit too slow for me, so we could even speed this up even more. And I'm watching this value here, which is my current volume essentially, um, as I'm listening to my robot play my chords here. So one last interesting thing you can do with random is to use it with a range of just two. So you can think of this as on off or zero and one. So I'll take a random two, show you what this looks like. This is just going to give me a zero or a one every time I click it. So this means that we could actually hook this up to a toggle. You know what? I'm gonna get rid of that for a minute. And then we could use this toggle, which is now randomly turned on and off, to generate some other possible thing happening with our robot, our piano robot here. So maybe uh, let's just move the pitch down a little bit so maybe our scales only go up part way on the keyboard. I don't know, how about, uh, how about to middle C, to 60. And we'll keep our tempo, random tempo there. But then let's use this random toggle here to turn on and off something else happening at the high end of the keyboard. So maybe we'll grab, go back to our random object and let's see. Up at this end, we'll do an octave, so that's 12. And I want it to start here, which is 72, and add 72 to this. This is gonna be a pitch that I am creating. And I want this to be actually paired with another note that's close to it. So I'm gonna do plus four here as well. And I'll take this note, put it into my case lighter, and the output of this note, also put it into my case lighter. And then use this toggle to turn on a metronome, a metro, sorry, that controls my random here. All right, so just so we can hear what we're listening for, here's my new music. Okay, and then here we're going to turn this on and off randomly with this metro here. Do that. So some, we're always gonna have this robot playing his scales, his chord scales here, and then sometimes we will have this little guy here, and actually we'll make this faster because I don't want it to be the same tempo. Okay. So you can see you can build this up and up and up. Um, in fact, one other thing I didn't talk about yet, but this is the same concept with hot and cold inlets, is that you could actually set the right operand of your addition objects here with, let's say, other random objects. Okay, so have fun playing around with this and see what you can come up with.